Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We thank, thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. We thank and praise you for those who are watching us via live stream. We thank you for choosing Greater Grace Church as your place of worship. This morning we come to celebrate our God. Yeah, we come glory. to celebrate Jesus this morning. Glory. So we want you to go in prayer with us. And then I'll be reading Psalm 150 in your ear. And our pastor, Bishop Larry O. Jones, thanks you for watching us this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come to you, Lord God, with our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. We come to you with a grateful heart this morning, Lord God. You, we Lord. come in and we declare that you and you, you alone Jesus. are worthy, Lord God. We declare that there's absolutely none like you, you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We declare thank that you've you, been you. so good and so kind and we love you, Lord God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We honor the name of Jesus. Lord God, you're sovereign, you're holy, and you reign, and you're just, and you're faithful, and you're kind, and you're yeah. merciful. And we say thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, your love and your tender kindness. We thank you for all that you've done, Lord God. We thank you for the shedding of your blood, Lord God. We thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection, Lord God. Had you not gotten up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Had you not gotten up on the third day, Lord God, where would we be, Lord God? That's why we give you praise, Lord God. That's why we give you the fruit of our lips this morning, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in your name, Jesus, in your name, Lord God. Lord God, have your way in this service, Lord God. Lord God, send your anointing to destroy yokes and remove burdens, lift heavy loads, Lord God. Restore the one of some salvation this morning, Lord God. Restore, redeem, Lord God. Revive, refresh, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Lord God, we pray that the word will fall on good ground, Lord God. We pray that the word will cause me to repent this morning, Lord God. We pray that your word will deliver today, Lord God. Set the captives free, Lord God. Lord God, use our music ministry, Lord God. Let them sing for your glory, Lord God. We crucify flesh this morning, Lord God. Flesh will not glory in your presence, Lord God. Anoint our pastor, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way in this service, Lord God. Move in this service, Lord God. Do it in this service, Lord God. Send the Holy Ghost in this service, Lord God. Fill with the Holy Ghost in this service. Hallelujah. We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. Have your way, 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 have your way. Move, Jesus, move, Jesus. Move, Lord God, move. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, hallelujah. None but the righteous, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, he's a mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 150, the word of the Lord reads, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Hallelujah, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yes, yes, yes. Echo the
Resurrection Sunday, hallelujah, aren't you glad to know that he, hallelujah, he rose from the grave for you, 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 and you.
about you but I thank God for loving me enough to give his life on Calvary I thank you Lord that you love me too much hallelujah the next song is called excess love hallelujah
in love. Hallelujah. Hey. Just a 
praise the Lord because he is risen. Amen. Are you glad he rose? Are you glad that he rose on the third day? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I am free. Hallelujah. Whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank our music ministry. And at this time, we will have our grace news. I am Tyler Jones, and this is Greater Grace News. Today, we celebrate Resurrection Day. Jesus Christ is alive. It's council time, GTC. Make sure you sign up for this spring council, which will be held at House of Prayer of All Nations in Washington Park, Illinois. There will be inspiring day sessions as well as nightly dynamic speakers with powerful worship. We hope to see you there. Join us for our communion service April 7th, 2024 during our 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. worship service. As 1 Corinthians 11 and 24 states, do this in remembrance of me. Greater Grace Church will have a tailgate sale April 20th, 2024 on the GTC parking lot from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Turn your unwanted items into treasure. This is a great opportunity to raise funds for the Angel of Grace Pledge. Reserve your spot today. See Sister Denise Ivy for more information. Amen. Amen. All the great things that are going on here at Greater Grace Church. If you all will please stand at this time as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear a word from God. Are you ready to hear a word this morning? Are you ready to hear a word this morning? I bring to the pulpit at this time our pastor, Bishop Larry O. Jones. Let's say amen as he comes. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord, everybody. So glad to see you all today on this Resurrection Sunday. And why don't you turn to somebody and tell them, say, Happy Resurrection. All right. You may take your seats, everyone. This is a day that the church world is rejoicing about. You know... How many of you are glad that Jesus rose from the grave today? How many of you are glad that he is alive today? How many of you know without a doubt he's alive in your soul today? Well, give him a great big praise, everybody. Let's thank God for his, his grace and his mercy. Praise God. Today what I want to do... Uh, the message I feel inspired to give today, I want you to turn to somebody and ask me this question. Is Jesus alive? Jesus alive. Ask somebody, say, is Jesus alive? Jesus alive? All right. The reason I ask that question is because we live in a time where we say we believe in God but do our actions go along with our belief? So therefore become questionable in what we actually believe. We live in a time where we say we're about the things of God, but the things we do are opposite to God. What do we believe? Right now, if you think about this, how many of you use medicine at all? So just raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. I do too. And the thing about medicine is we are constantly trying to prolong life because we're all dying every day, believe it or not. And as we go through the process, we're trying to prolong death from taking place. But Jesus died so we can live. Now, we're quick to take our doses as prescribed on the bottle. But are we quick to follow Jesus who gave his life so we can have life eternal? 
Can somebody say amen for that, my friends? In Mark chapter 16 and verse 1, we're going to read these verses because it tells us what happened that glorious morning. It says, and when the Sabbath, in verse 1, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Solomon had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Jesus is dead. He's in the tomb. And in those days, there was no embalming. And therefore, they knew he would be smelly. They wanted to, they wanted to soothe the smell by giving spices to his body. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Imagine seeing the sun set, see the sun begin to rise, seeing some daylight in the midst of, a, of the darkness of the evening fading away. And it says, and, and, they, and they said unto, among themselves, who shall roll away the stone for the door of the sepulchre. Yeah. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Yeah. For it was very great. And entering to the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting in the right hand, clothed in a long white garment. Yeah. And they were frightened. Yeah. Imagine the image, what was going through their minds. We come to care for the body of Jesus. The stone has moved away. We don't see Jesus, but here's this young man, an angel. And he said unto them, be not frightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he go up before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. Here they tell these ladies, Jesus is no longer dead. Jesus has risen from the grave. Everybody should say amen for that. Because here, brothers and sisters, as he's now alive, the angels give the charge for them to go and tell his disciples that Jesus is alive. Why is this important to us? One, without resurrection, there is no eternal life. Without his death, there's no payment for sin. And in order to access it, it's all by our faith and believing that he lived, that, well, I'll go back, that he was born, that he lived, that he died, he conquered the grave, and he's alive right now, my friends. This is imperative to the believer for us to be encouraged because we live in times now where our faith is being tested like never before. We live in time now where the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you find some are shaking at their knees and beginning to throw in the towel because of events and circumstances that's taking place. But when you could think of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord that lived and died, the death he died was a hideous death. But to think that in three days and three nights, he rose from the grave and is alive now, and now all power on earth is in his hands, my friends. We should rejoice knowing if we just believe in him, everything's going to be all right. The question is this, the argument. The argument is, is Jesus alive? Remember what they said after they heard the religious leaders and the Romans that both sides blamed the other side. The Romans and Elizabeth said that the disciples came and stole the body away. The disciples said the Romans stole the body away. But the body was not stolen. 
he was alive. Not only was he alive, this should be a case that if Johnny Cochran was, was alive today, should easily win. Because when you go back into scripture and ask yourself, how many times did Jesus prove he was alive? You're going to find at least 12 different times in scripture that show that he was alive. The first appearance of Jesus was to Mary Magdalene as they went to the tomb. And there, after others had left and she was standing there crying by herself, Jesus appeared to her and told her, trust me not, because I have not yet ascended. Then you find another case, Matthew 28, verse 8 through 10. I'm going to give you the verses. You can read and go home. You find the fact he appeared to other women, Mary of Clopas and Mary the mother of James and Jonas. You find also he appeared to Peter on the same day. But in Luke 24, 33 to 34, 1 Corinthians 5 and 5, he appeared to the two disciples of the road of Emus. Luke 24, 13 to verse 35, and Mark 16 to verse 12 through 12. And then he appeared to the ten disciples on the evening of the first day of the week when Thomas was not there. John 20, 19, verse 25. After six or eight days later, he appeared again. And to the level of apostles, seemingly, uh, 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 seemingly especially for the purpose of, for Thomas to believe. That was John 20, verse 24 to 29. He appeared to the seven disciples by the Sea of Galilee. John chapter 21, verse 1 to 22. He appeared to the 11 apostles on a certain mountain in Galilee. And some say it's the mountain t uh, Tabor. And it's Matthew 28, verse 16 to verse 18. He also appeared on the Mount of Olives before he ascended into heaven. That we find will be in Acts 1, 12 to 15. And then we find the Lord also appeared to his brother James. It was written in 1 Corinthians 15 and 7. By eight, now this is all prior to his ascension. But after his ascension, he appeared unto Paul. On the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 22. And then decades later, he finally appeared unto his beloved John on the Isle of Patmos, Revelation 1 through 9 and verse 16. Here, brother and sister, he's not dead, he's alive. He is alive and well. And what he does, brothers and sisters, what we have to understand is this. As people today question, is Jesus alive? We must ask ourselves the question about life and death. Therefore, if Jesus is alive, it should make it plain to us there is life after death, what we call death. But here, brothers and sisters, you find in Luke chapter 16, here a great example, there is life after death. Therefore, this is why again it's so important that Jesus did what? Conquered the grave and rose from the grave. In Luke 16, 19, it says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. You see, my friend in life, we all may not have the same opportunity we all may not live in the same path, but by your faith, my friend, you can determine your eternity. That's why it's so important that we put our faith in Jesus Christ. For here it comes in verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Note here what it says. One was carried to Abraham's bosom. The other one was just buried. Oh, brothers and sisters, please take note of this. It is showing here a distinct difference after death of the care for the believer versus how the unbeliever shall be treated. Here he says in verse 23, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment and seeing Abraham afar off 
and Lazarus in his bosom. Here the rich man now sees there's a difference of care. Here he is suffering, but Lazarus is in comfort. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he's comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this between us and you, there's a great gulf. So they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can ye pass to us that will come from thence. Here what is taking place as the poor man, you don't hear a word from Lazarus. Because Lazarus is at rest, my friend. When you die in Jesus Christ, you're at rest. You're at a place of sleep, my friend. But you hear the rich man asking for mercy. But here you find that Father Abraham telling him, hey, look, you had good things in life. But what happened, you wouldn't do the good things. He had evil things in life. But he still kept his faith in me. And therefore now he is comforted, my friends. You see, it's not guaranteed that because you're broke, you're going to make it into heaven, my friend. Like it's not guaranteed if you're rich, you're going to make it into heaven. Only thing guaranteed is your faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we're going to make it in, my friend. And here you find there's a great gulf, a great separation. Why? So those that have passion with Jesus won't cross over to give you any water. And those that want to flee from torment can't come. Have you ever had a child, a person come to your house who you tried to help, and once they got to your house, they call all kind of havoc, called division, called trouble, you knew they had to leave. This is why the gulf is there. Even though you want comfort, your character has not changed. This is why as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand every day of our life, we're working on our character. So what does Jesus do? Jesus therefore says, now we know there is life after death. He makes promises to us. In John 14 and 1 it says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also here. Jesus is actually promising everlasting life to his believers. Then we find for eternity, we need to put our faith in Jesus for our salvation. In John 5 and verse 24 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come in the combination, but is passed from what? death unto life. Like Lazarus died, yet you find Lazarus had life in the arms of Father Abraham. And then verse 25 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Therefore, Jesus is calling for the dead at a particular time, the time we call the rapture, my friend. But understand, in order for him to call us, he must be alive. Then we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin of the law. But thanks be that God will give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here the Apostle Paul writes about the fact that if you want, if you want to understand about the child of God, when the child of God takes their last breath, it's not death for us, it's called sleep. Because there is no sting. 
There is nothing to hold us down now because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, grave, you can't keep us because Jesus conquered the grave. He conquered death itself. Therefore, the sting of death is sin. Our sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus and the strength of sin of the law. But now we walk not by the law, but by the Spirit of the Lord, my friend. But thanks be to God who give us the victory. In other words, uh, we should thank God for eternal life right now, my friend. It is due to us. Why? Because Jesus lives. And then here in Acts 1 and 11 says, uh, as Jesus is before his disciples, preparing to make his ascension, uh, it said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall show calm in like, in like manner as ye have seen him go into the heavens. Here the angel prophesied. Just as they saw him going up, he's coming back, my friend. Now, but why is he coming back? He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his people. Because uh, his people are promised what they have what? Everlasting life. That's why in 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 14, uh, as the apostle Paul, who yet met Jesus on the road to Damascus, uh, and know that he is alive, uh, he wrote these words to the Thessalonian church uh, and said, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also will sleep in Jesus. Uh, once again, I said the children of God, uh, we don't die, we go to sleep, my friend. Uh, in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh, for this we say unto you uh, by the word of the Lord that we which are alive uh, and remain unto the coming of the Lord uh, shall prevent them which are asleep. Uh, here Paul is saying you need to stop worrying uh, about those that have already have died. Uh, Jesus is going to bring them back, but you and I that are alive uh, need to make sure we got our stuff together. Uh, for the Lord said, verse 16, uh, for the Lord himself uh, shall descend from heaven uh, with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel, uh, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them uh, in the cloud uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, wherefore, comfort one another uh, with these words. Hear my brothers, uh, hear my sisters, uh, we are to encourage each other uh, that Jesus Christ is alive. Uh, that's why we today, uh, and we celebrate his resurrection. Uh, we don't celebrate it just in a, some ceremonial fashion. Uh, we celebrate because we are the recipients uh, of his victory. Uh, we are the recipients uh, of him overcoming the grave. Uh, we are the recipients of uh, him overcoming death itself. Uh, that's why, child of God, uh, it's time to stop acting like uh, and playing like we in church. Uh, we got to stop all this stuff because uh, the God that I serve uh, is a true and living God. Uh, that's why even when he come back, uh, he come back with a shout. Uh, there won't be no quiet stuff going on. Uh, there going to be the angels. Uh, there going to be the trump of God. Uh, because we're the dead in Christ. Uh, think about when a body uh, that's rotting away, uh, yet get a glorified body, my friend. Uh, Jesus is alive today. Uh, that's why we got to hold on to what we believe. Uh, we got to hold on uh, that he is Savior and Lord. Uh, we got to hold on uh, he'll never fail us. Uh, that he is alive right now. Uh, oh, give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. He's alive. And it's important that this portion of scripture is not taken lightly. He's alive. He actually died, actually rose from the grave. And it wasn't one person who told this. You got at least 12 accounts in scripture. Now remember what it says in the book of John. The vibe had not been written that would tell about all the activities that took place. More took place. But your honor, that the finished rest. 
We gave all type of evidence. Why would you not accept Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today, my friend? Can somebody give him a hand break? Hallelujah! 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 I want everybody to stand to your feet right now. I pray you got a something out of something today's message. You see, the one thing that I am still pondering in my mind, how can we be heirs of such priceless gifts from God? And yet our attitude can be sometimes so lackadaisical. It's about me, myself, and I than about him. Here's one thing about a love relationship. A real love relationship, both parties trying to find what the other one wants. Both parties want want to find what the other one wants. So I can meet your needs, you meet my needs, and guess what happened? We're giving to each other. We're givers. Think about this. When Jesus was born, angels was making all types of praise. Kings came to worship him. Got people's attention. When he died on Calvary Cross, earth itself quaked. Blackness came over the earth. Nature responded to the creator who was dying on the cross. The veil of the temple is torn from the top to the bottom. All this stuff is getting your attention. Then when he rose from the grave, we find again there's attention. There's a stir taking place. People talking among themselves. And 50 days after his resurrection, the day of Pentecost, they act like drunk. They got the attention of the town. When he come back for the church, he can get the attention of the saints. The point, though, is we right now should be getting the attention of the town to tell them all about Jesus. You see, my friend, this is not a quiet salvation. This is not a quiet salvation. It is not a quiet salvation. And that's why when we celebrate this day, just to think about what he did for us is mind boggling. To think about who he is is almost can't really comprehend it. But yet we know that he is. And that's why we should live our life every day being rapture ready. When you go on a trip, you don't wait an hour before to leave town. You start sometime a week ahead buying stuff, packing stuff. You double check to make sure. If you're flying, you want to make sure the bag is not too heavy. If you're driving, you want to make sure you got some snacks, whatever. But you want to be ready for your trip. How many ready for the trip when Jesus comes back? We come back for the church, my friend. I want to be ready when he comes back for his church. Now, I'm going to try and sing a little bit of this, okay? I should have looked up the words if I didn't, okay? There's an old hymn, the last portion to go. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along like narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to implore. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I work on that. that that's, 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 that's one of old songs. 
He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me, he talks with me. And he knows life perfect way. We have to understand, my friend, he lives where now, if you're a believer, in you by the Holy Ghost. And that's why we today should be excited about him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we want to thank you right now for your goodness and for your mercy. We want to thank you, God, for never, ever failing us. And God, on this day, we celebrate your resurrection. We celebrate, oh God, your goodness. We celebrate, oh God, your love. We celebrate your victory. Lord, we thank you for rising from the grave, conquering the grave and death, so we may have eternal life. Bless now, Lord, each and every one of the sound of my voice today. And God, bless them for you know their needs and their prayer requests. And God, we will work to make sure we are ready for when you come back for your church. And we will share that word with other people that God, you're coming back. And you're coming back soon for your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen, everybody. And give God a hand praise right now. Hallelujah. I want to invite somebody today, a man, woman, boy, girl, and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to him that conquered, the, conquered death and grave. So by my faith in him, I may have everlasting life. You that are here, I ask you to come right now. 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 If you're a church home, we've got to receive you at Greater Grace Church. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Let us all say amen, everybody. I thank God for you all. May God bless you, each and every one. I hope you have a great resurrection day with family and friends. But most of all, remind yourself and remind others Jesus is alive, and he is coming back, my friends. I thank God for each of you. I want to thank those of you who have been supporting the Angel Grace. We're getting close to our April 28th day. I just want to encourage you that those who have not made pledges or have not given anything, we want, we're looking for 100% participation, and we thank God for you. Now, may we bow our heads. Lord, I thank you now, God, for your goodness and for your mercy and for your kindness. Lord, you've been so good, you've been so kind. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless, Lord, each and every one of the sound of our voice. We're now worshiping, giving God, and we now bring forth our tithes and offering the church may have what it may need. Bless now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to someone and tell them to say, Happy Resurrection Day. Give the hands of our ushers to direct you around this time as you worship by giving. Yeah, yeah. When I'm talking to places.